Hey everybody, Ron here with Riding Off Ron. Hey, tonight I want to talk to you about this hierarchy of controls. I know you guys have seen this before, uh, so it should just be a quick refresher. But uh, this is key. We talked about hazard recognition uh, last time, or a couple times ago, I can't remember when. But uh, we did talk about hazard recognition, I believe we agree that uh, how our people get hurt is they don't recognize a hazard, or if they do recognize it, they don't know how to manage it, right? So this is what this is about. This is helping us control them hazards when we face them. So you do your hazard recognition, or you do your, you know, you do your pre-shift, you do your uh, on-shift, you do your workplace exam, or whatever it is you're doing, and you come across a hazard, you should be using this hierarchy control to figure out how to control that hazard. Hey, can I eliminate it? If not, do I substitute it? And you just work your way down this, okay? Clear down to PPE. Okay, what I like about this upside down pyramid, I like this one. There's all different kinds out there and I know you guys have seen them all. But the higher up we go, you can see it's more effective. Okay, and the best thing about it is you don't have to depend on anybody. If you eliminate a hazard, you don't have to depend on anybody. It's gone. Okay, it's, it's, it's not even there. So that's the, that's the top one to do there, but that's tough. Okay, so again, if you're out doing a workplace exam or a pre-shift or whatever, and you find something in the walkway that's obstructing it and that's a hazard, what do you do? You pick it up and you move it. You eliminate it. Pretty easy. Okay, some things it's, it's tough. Okay, maybe you're trying to figure out how to eliminate, you know, Incidents with haul trucks got to have haul trucks, right? So we can't just get rid of all the haul trucks or if you're trying to figure out how How do we stop people from getting hurt on long wall? Pretty tough got to have your long wall there That's how you make money. Okay, so you got to narrow that down, right? But again try to eliminate it Okay, another good elimination one for like working at heights that I can think of is uh, Like air conditioners and, and stuff like that on roofs of buildings and houses Okay, now, where do they put them? They put them on the ground. Eliminate somebody from having to go up there. So that'd be an eliminate. Okay. I know now, for example, because uh, I'm scared of working at heights, right? I'm, I'm scared to be up on a ladder, scared to be at heights. Uh, actually, three things I'm scared of. One's working at heights. The other snakes and the other one I'm scared of the dark. But, but I'm kind of interested. I want to look, you know, now they put them, they make them... Uh, Christmas lights that you just stick in the grass and they just shoot up on the side of your house. I kind of want to do a study on that and I think I'm going to figure, try to figure it out. But I want to see how many injuries it's eliminated or how many injuries have been reduced since them have been made. Right? Because people using ladders falling off of them. Okay? You guys have been in my classes or, or worked with me or worked for me, you know that I think that one of the most dangerous things on the mine site is a ladder. Okay? Two things I think is misused more than anything on a mine site, ladder and the uh, extension cord, right? So that's how you can eliminate working at heights. So that'd be an elimination type thing. Substitute, that'd be where you have to do the same. You're doing a job and you still got to do it, but maybe you use a, a, a less hazardous process or maybe you're not exposing people as much, okay? One substitute thing that I think of that comes to my mind uh, and, I, and again, this is just me. You guys may have your own variants on this and use it any way you want. This is just me thinking this is how I teach it. But uh, substitute it. I remember uh, when I first started mine, we do long wall moves, right? You have to rope or mesh or whatever it is you call it. And uh, we used to get a lot of people in the, in the pan line and we'd be running them gopher drills or turbo drills, all that kind of stuff. A lot of people exposed out there to the face. Yeah, we put our sprags down, but you're still exposed. So a substitute one, to me, is when they come up with the uh, pan line bolter. Right, still got a bolt, can't eliminate bolting. Still got to do that. So you got to put the hole in the roof and the rebar in there and glue it up in there and hold the roof up. But we substituted it with a less hazardous process because there's less people exposed. Okay, you just got one, one or two guys out there bolting on a pan line bolter instead of, you know, 10, 12, 13 guys out there doing it. Okay, so that'd be a substitute. Next, rung down on the pyramid, so to speak, would be engineering control. What is that? People ask me, well, what's an engineering control? There's all kinds of stuff out there for that. Uh, 
One thing that I can think of is like boarding systems or boarding ladders. Where I worked at in New Mexico, we had a couple individuals fall off of a uh, dozer. Okay, so we did a big push on boarding ladders, and we put them on. So on that dozer itself, they had a man basket. You got in it, it was hydraulically operated, and it'd pick you up to the operator's cab. You didn't have to climb up the track and any of that stuff on that slick metal. You just got in that man basket and it picked you up. Same way with the haul trucks. All trucks had a ladder, when you're driving it was up like this, when you parked, you could let it down and it was an angle, you just walk down it, because it's a lot easier to walk down a stairwell than it is up a ladder, right? So that's kind of engineering. Uh, we used to have problems with uh, noise and stuff, so we put in, you know, noise-proof mats. Uh, that would be an engineering control, something, something like that, okay? Isolation, this is, is a, big, a big one and a good one. This is where you block your yourself or your employee off from the hazard. Okay, so like guarding around your tailpiece or head pulleys. Okay, that's why guarding is such a good one, but it has to be there, right? So it's isolating us. Okay, that'd be an isolation. Or lockout, tag out, test and try, that'd be isolation. Okay, you're, you're doing something to put a barrier between yourself and that hazard. Administrative controls, this is all of our safety meetings, uh, policies and procedures signage, any of that kind of stuff falls under administrative. What I'm doing to you today, educating you, that is a administrative control. Okay, so it's pretty low, right? Because it's got to depend on me conveying the right stuff and you understanding it and taking it to the field, right? Okay, and I like the word education. I don't like the word training. I know I say training a lot, but I try not to, okay? I think you train your dog, you educate your employees. Okay, we educate them to do stuff. I train my dog, I throw a stick, he brings it back. Okay, be different. I want to educate you guys on how not to get hurt, how to use this, right? Different. Okay, so we educate, uh, we don't train. And then PPE. Okay, PPE is the last line of defense, right? You have to depend on people to wear it right, or to even wear it at all. And it's not very effective because you have to wear it a certain way. Right? Just like I was talking the other day about respirators, you know, the 100 series respirator protects 99.97% of what you're trying to bury yourself between. If you wear it right, if you're clean shaven, if you have a proper seal, if you've had a fit test, okay, if you've been medically cleared. So all that stuff will drive it down if you don't do that, right? So not very effective because you have to depend on people. Okay, so this is a hierarchy of controls. Uh, again, just a refresher, uh, we can get into it more if you guys want, but uh, just remember that if you go to do a job, okay, and you're locking and tagging something out and doing your test and try, and you're following a procedure, and you got to wear some type of PPE, right, fall protection, respirator, something like that, you got to pay attention to what you're doing. You got to pay attention because it's not very effective the lower we are down here, right? Not saying you can't do it without getting hurt, okay? But you gotta make sure you're doing what you're doing and you're doing it the right way. Okay, you see this dotted line here and I put industry over there. And actually, I didn't write any of this. My wife did, thank gosh, because uh, I have my own font and there's no way you would be able to read it. But uh, I think this is where we are as an industry, okay? It, the coal industry, I believe we're right here. There's a lot of companies out there that they do a lot of substitute and eliminate, but a lot of times we're just engineering and we're down in here because sometimes this is hard, like I talked about, and it's pretty costly too, right? So it's a, an expense thing, but that's not an excuse, okay? But we just got to make sure we're trying to get up here as high as we can. And the reason I say we're down here is if you think about it, if you've ever had an injury or an incident at your site, okay? and they've done a root cause analysis on it, say they do use ICAM or TAP or whatever they use, they're gonna come up with what the root cause was and what can we do to control it. A lot of times, they'll just pull everybody in and re-educate them. Even MSHA will do that. MSHA will find a hazard and they'll say, hey, bring everybody in and re-educate them. Okay, not bashing MSHA, because I love MSHA, right? I think they're great for us. In fact, I'm gonna do another one here fairly quick on that. But, uh, man, that's not very effective. 
It's easy to do. It's easy to do that investigation and say, hey, let's just retrain everybody and let's just uh, do this and that, but it's not very effective. So if you're in them accident investigations or root cause analysis, do some pushback. What can we do to in engineer it? Let's just don't always do the admin and PPE. Okay, it's that simple. Let's add to the policy. Let's make them wear this, make them do that. Uh, you know, something like that. But, so try to push back. I know where I worked in New Mexico, we had some mine manager there and a safety manager there again, talked about these guys before. They didn't want to see none of this stuff. What can we do up in this area? Okay, because they knew that was the most effective way. Okay, so again, use this even when you're out doing the job. Think of this, how can I eliminate this hazard? If I can't, how do I do this, right? And then again, remember, if you're doing a job and it's in this bottom uh, tier, man, pay attention, guys. Again, remember, you're responsible for your own safety. Don't put yourself in an unsafe situation. Always somebody waiting for you at home to come home, okay? Remember that. And uh, remember this. And uh, when you go back to work, whenever it is, have a safe ship. And uh, we'll get to that zero uh, fatalities and zero harm. If we do this stuff, one day at a time, one shift at a time, one hour at a time, that's how we'll get there. And I'll catch you later on rattling off wrong.